You know me only as Grandma. The fact that I was once young. Was once a girl like you. Was once windy. Look, it was a bad enough shock. But how do I tell you? How do I tell you of Peter? What he will be to you yeah, will be for you to find. How will I tell you of Neverland, of the adventures that you will have, what they'll be? Who knows? Maybe it will be all sorcerers for you. How do I even describe any of this? Any of this at all? What do I say of a fairy? You cannot see them. Kensington, and I said, I lived there with my brothers, Michael and John, and we lived in the great house, and we lived with our mother, who was as good as you can be, and like poetry as much as she did. Break, break, break on my cold grey stones, O sea, but the tender grace of a day that is dead will never come back to you. But in spite of that, she was sure to let us know from our very youngest age that we would one day grow up and oh, I said it's so sad children you're so sweet at this age but you must grow up and I remember I turned to my mother and I said mother must I grow up yes everyone has to grow up what what everyone all safe was and I caught her mentioning a name there upon her breath I caught her whisper, Peter Pan. And she looked then at the lights, the lights, the gas lights of Kensington, and she said, Oh, all the lights are on, that's a good thing. Now, our father, our father was as good as you could be, but be worried about our education. He would come into our schoolroom when we were busy learning, and he would say, What's all this nonsense now, children? Come on, if you wish to grow as strong and intelligent and clever as I am, then you must do your algebra. Remember, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the other two sides squared. Oh, what a clever man, said Michael, my brother. But must we take the medicine? Well, of course. You must take your medicine, children, <laughs> to grow up to be strong and intelligent like me. And so he would leave us. And that truth be said, our parents would often leave us by night. And by night, I would ask my brothers, Michael and John, what stories do you want? And Michael, he was all the same. I want stories of pirates. I want stories of how they sailed the seven seas. I want the story of the fiercest of pirates that ever there sailed. The wild Captain Hook, ex-boatswain of black feared himself. The one who was so fierce, he disappeared. I want to know where he went after he was no longer seen on the seven seas. But John, who was younger, said, well, I want to know about the wild folk, the wild folk who used to live, live here. I want to know what they did. I want to know why they're only left in America when they're called Indians. Now, I, of course, knew because I knew these things, that good stories have dragons in, and they have fairies, they have unicorns, and they have mermaids. And I would try and tell them a story with all of them in. But one night, one dark, dark, dark night, I remember, we looked up, and there was somebody, a boy, listening at the window. But before we could wonder, there was a loud, waff, 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 waff. Waff, waff. And our dog, who we called Nana, barked and round and caught something, something black. And I held it up in the air. I'm not, I'm not what a... is that? Is it a shadow? Has our dog caught a shadow? 
child at the wedding. But just at that moment, our father came in. What is all this nonsense, children? What is going on in here? And no, what father, what is this? Lost. What is it? This I shall give to your mother. And our mother took the black fabric and she put it in that drawer. You know the one the parents have high up. They think you can't reach, but they put the key low down where they think you don't know where it is. It was that drawer. And then he freezed off. Then he turned to us with fury and said, Take your medicine, children, and get down to your algebra. Shan't! You will do as I say, boy. Why did you take your medicine? Well, of course I take my medicine. I didn't grow up to be strong and intelligent. We're not taking my medicine. Do you think he should take his medicine? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We think you should take the medicine. But I always take my medicine. Take it now. Mm. Well, OK, then. There you go, Father. Take it. Take it. Take your medicine, Father. Drink it. Drink, drink one. Drink, drink, drink. Drink it. Drink Wait. it. What's that over there? What? Look. What? Look over there, children. Mm. And while we look, the five father, I'm afraid he gave the medicine. Rest, rest, rest <laughs> to the dog. And the dog was probably there, sick on the carpet. And father, in a fury, said, Get that filthy beast out of my house now. Chain it in the yard. And so it was. He took the dog quite away and left us all alone. While well, all through the town. One by one, one by one, the lights started to go out. Hey, man, I'm alive. And suddenly, there was a presence there in the room, moving so fast you couldn't see it, moving so hard you could barely believe it. And as we look, it seems to be going to that cupboard, the one your parents think you don't know about. Go inside. But just then, Michael said, who's that? Who's that at the window? And I called, for there seemed to be a boy there. And I called, who are you? Ha ha, I am Pizza Pan. Who? Pizza Pan, I've come for my shadow. You're the boy who we have the shadow. Who is your mother? I haven't got a mother. No, silly, of course you have a mother. Now, yeah. did you want something, you said? My shadow. Oh, my mother put it up in that drawer. Ah, oh, would you get it for me? Yes, I know the locket. I will get it for you. I know you. You've got to. Make it on your own, but we don't have to grow up. We can stay forever young. Up there in the cupboard. And so I climbed up, up into the cupboard. And I pulled it out. And there was the fair think about the fairy inside. But I nearly stumbled. I closed the lock and I fell back down. And all of a sudden, there was somebody catching me. Peter! Yes? You appear to be flying. Of course I can fly, can't you? And he swept us down and I said, here you are. Here's your shadow. The one I got from the drawer. No. Now sew it back to your feet. Thank you. Do you have a needle of thread? No. Do you know how to? Uh, do you want me to give you one? Oh, thank you. Do you think boys can sew? Do you think he could sew? Oh, oh pizza. <laughs> oh, pizza, you've broken it. Let me thread it for you. Now. You're going to have to be a very brave boy because I'm going to have to put this back on you. Give me your feet. I can be brave. It might hurt a bit. And I sewed the shadow back on. You know, Peter, I think I had something to do with this. Oh, oh, so you did. So you did. And I seem to remember that you were quiet. 
Well, hardly. You'd better go and see your mother. She will kiss it all better for you. I haven't got a mother. Nonsense. Everyone has a mother. Not me. Not me. I live in Neverland. Did you never have a mother, Peter? No. I've got a vague memory. I heard some people talking about all the things it would take to make me a man. And I thought, no fear. You couldn't see me for dust. And off I went. I'll never grow up. And you live all alone, Peter? No, I live with the Lost Boys. Who are they? Oh, haven't you ever wondered to all the children whose parents don't want them anymore or who haven't got any parents? Doesn't the government look after them or, or, or something? No, they come to me! There must be ever so many of them. Well, they do get thinned out from time to time, but I have some of them, yes. And do they have a mother? No, we have no mother. Who looks after you? I do. You? I do, yes. Those poor, 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 poor lads. Why don't you come to Neverland and be their mother if you want? Why not join me? Join you? But how? said Michael. I want to join you, but how? Fly! Come with me. Oh, but how do you fly? I've always wanted to know how does one fly? You aim for the ground and fix. Oh, yes, said my brother Michael, and before I could stop him, he'd opened the window and I pulled him back as he jumped. Oh, come here, Michael. You're not throwing yourself. I don't trust you, Peter. How do you really trust? Ah, oh, fairy dust. Where's Tinkerbell? We need some fairy dust. He blew us upon us. Ooh. Hey! Hey, hey, hey! Now I'm free! <laughs> Out of the window! Out of the window! Pulse that chimney pot, turn right and carry on flying till morning. And so we flew. You can tell Peter gives names. He's not very good at it. But I was given my name by my mother. She sewed it in my clothes so that when I was lost, I wouldn't be forgotten. Why, what is your full name? Slightly, slightly soiled. It was there in my clothes when Peter found me. Come on, we better try and find him. And so off they went. 
and elsewhere in the island, there came the fearsome captain. Huh. No one knows what it's like to be the bad man, to be the sad man with two behind blue eyes. And it's Skylark. Skylark! Yes, sir. Why are you lagging behind, boy? Push your legs! You are a liability. Yeah, take that. Ah. Now, Smee, do you know what it's like to be me, boy? Do you know what it's like to be downtrodden? Do you know what it's like to be so hateful? I can't say I do, no, no. That's not the point, me. Do you know what I hate the most? Tell me, Captain, tell me. What I hate the most is the boy they call Peter Pan. But why, Captain, why? Because, me. he is the boy that cut off my hand and left me with this. Oh, but to be sure, Captain, to be sure, but I've heard you say a dozen times that it's better to have a hook than a hand because it's such a wonderful corkscrew and such. Well, you're not wrong there, Smee. It certainly comes in handy. If I had my way, I'd cut off all your hands oh, and Captain. replace it with a hook. Oh, Captain. But the worst thing is, Smee, do you know what he did when he cut off my hand? What, Captain, what? He cut it off it to the dragon. Oh, Captain! Whose name I dare hardly mention. And do you know what the worst thing is? What, Captain, what? The dragon enjoyed the taste of my hand so much that now he wants to devour the rest of me. Oh, no, Captain! He chases me endlessly, Smee, across land and sea, far and wide. He looks for me, Smee. He wants to devour the rest of me. Oh, shiver me timbers, Captain. But guess what, Smee? What, Captain? I had a cunning plan. What was that? I dressed up a grandfather clock in my favourite smock coat, disguise it as a human being, and fed it to the dragon, the whole thing in one. Oh, those teeth, to me, those teeth. Oh, Captain. And the dragon devoured the grandfather clock. And now, Smee, and yes. this is the clever part. Yes. Guess what? What? Whenever the dragon comes looking for me, I am warned of his approach by the constant tick, tock, tick, tock. And while it ticks and tocks to me, the dragon will never be able to catch me. Genius, Captain, genius. Thank you, Smee. <laughs> but, but what happens when the mechanism runs down? When the mechanism runs down, Smee, is the day that I fear the most. For that is when the dragon will find me. And I do not know what I will do, Smee. Oh, Captain, Captain. Smee? Yes? Do you feel what I feel? The ground, it's warm. I feel heat coming from these vents. Oh, yes, Captain, yes. As if, as if there was a house underneath. I think we've discovered the boy's lair. Oh, yes, Captain. Look, me. count the vents. One, two, three, four, five. One for each of the boys. They don't have a mother, they don't belong, so they have to have a doorway each. And two there, two ruined vents, me. Where Peter Pan thinned out some of the, the larger boys. Oh, Captain. Now, Smee. Yes? I have a plan. Oh. You, my scrawny little friend, must go down the vent and bring the children back to me. Do you think you can do that to me? Captain, I think they're too narrow for me. What? For us skinny, scrubby little 
boy like you. Come on, Smee. Try and squeeze down that boy. Come on. Ow. Get yourself in. Ow. 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 It's no good, Smee. You're too large. There's too much of me, Captain. I can't do it. You, boy, have been eating too much. I have a plan. Yes? I know what I shall do. From now on, I'll put you on a diet, Smee. You'll have nothing but water and ship's biscuits. Oh, Captain! And that way, you'll lose a little bit of this chubbiness. <laughs> and then, we'll squeeze you down into the vents, and the boys will be ours. Captain, wouldn't it be better to fatten up the boys rather than the other way round? That's me! I have an even more cunning plan. Yes, Captain? I shall bake the most enormous blue cake. Oh, Captain! And leave it here on the fence to tempt in the boys. Oh. And when the boys come along and see the enormous blue cake, they'll soon be so hungry, they'll want to devour the whole thing. <laughs> and once they've devoured it, they'll be so chubby that they will not be able to fit down the fence. And then, my plan shall be complete. Oh Dominance shall be asked me. Brilliant, Captain. Come now. We have work to do, boy. Genius. So while the Captain went off to bake the cake, and Smee was last to 